Hi there, my name is Lisa and today I am designing for Coco Daisy. I've got the leftover pieces of my October kit here and today I am going to be making a mini book. Um, I've made a couple of mini books previously. Um, these are for the trip that we took in the summer. I've basically, rather than creating one mini book, we had so many different elements of this trip, I've decided to make a whole load of mini books one little book for each part of the trip. I created one for the start of the journey. This is the actual journey itself, London to Atlanta. And then I've also created the Savannah part of the trip as well. I will link both of these books up below, but I do kind of think I've been making these mini books for absolutely years. For me, there is no big deal. It's easy to make, they come together quickly. And I sometimes wonder that when I'm kind of showing how I make them, if I don't go into such great detail, so if you're new to this completely, it can still seem rather overwhelming. So I thought I would strip it straight back, or right back to basics today, go right from the start, and actually show you how I start the makings of one of these mini books, and show you how simple they really are, and how quickly they can come together. And I'll do the full timeline as well, so you can actually see the time I started to the time I finished, so you can actually see how quick and easy one of those is, or one of these is. This is everything that I've taken from the kit. So this is what I'm going to be using. I've got scissors, my black journal pen, I have got my double-sided sticky tape here. I'm currently printing off a load of photos. The photo printer is still happily printing away and I've now just gone through the leftover pieces of my October kit and to make it so much easier, I have placed in little dishes. I've got some die cut pieces. I've got some bits and pieces left over from the kit, some wooden pieces, a tag. I love these kind of little, they feel a bit like, I've, they're not felt, but they're almost like fabric. Um, this pile here, I've got the, um, I do love a glassine bag in a mini book. I've got a couple of tags there. I've got these really nice clips. Um, I've got the gratitude notebook. Not sure if I'm gonna use that. And I've got some stickers there. I do put um, things on here that I may not necessarily use, but I like to have it all on one desk. I've got my alphabet stickers that are left over. I've got chipboard. I haven't even delved into this chipboard yet, so I really should use that. I've gone through the journal cards and selected. They're very autumnal and very Halloween-y. Um, this mini book, however, isn't that, but um, I've taken out the, di the journal cards that I can use. And like I said, I've got my photos. I've got 12 by 12 paper. They're double-sided. I've actually put them on the side up that I want to use. That just makes it easier. And then also on the desk next to me, I've got some papers here that I've already cut into that are also left over. One tip that I can really offer you by just taking those few minutes and actually going through your materials and going through and having a look and selecting everything that you think you may use for your mini book and putting it in front of you where you will be making the mini book makes life so much easier. It takes out all that procrastinating, it takes out all the time looking through things, umming and ahhing. When you've got a desk full of things that you want to use, and you can just then pick things and use them. It makes it so much easier. One thing I forgot to pop on my desk, I do have the paper bag from the classified kit, and I think I will actually use this as my book cover today. I haven't made a paper bag book for a long time. They make excellent covers for mini books. By folding it in half, that's going to be the size of my mini book. And what I really like, you've instantly got that pocket there so that's going to work really well for me. So it's currently 11.45 that's when I'm starting this book. I am going to go through my 12 by 12s and trim off the little Coco Daisy strips as I don't need them. Folding my 12 by 12s in half I don't quite need the end bits so I am going to trim them down and I'm going to trim them off inside as well so that they fit just inside. The easiest so. way I find to do this, I don't want them to come out of the cover. I'm going to place it just inside and I'm going to mark off here and then mark off here and that's exactly where I need to trim. 
that instantly now gives me my first page. I will be covering this. I need to strengthen it and obviously it's been folded so um, I need to pretty it up a little bit. But I'm going to go through now, work out what pages I want next. I am going to make the pages slightly different in size, not too much, just a little. But I'm going to go through and mark off and continue trimming down the pages. Sometimes let yourself be guided by the papers. I absolutely love this leaf design here. I really want to show it off on the pages where I'm going to be working, but also it works really nice looking onto this page here. The two go really well. So actually I'm going to cut this one down slightly smaller purely because I want to be able to see that design around it as well. If I have it that size, the full size, I lose quite a lot of the design underneath. So I want to be able to see that pattern with this pattern as well. I've got my pages. I'm really happy with this. They are going to be the centre pages. I now need to, I'm going to work on the cover. I need to strengthen it and add some paper. I'm going to use this leftover piece here. I'm really torn as I do love both sides. I think ideally what I should have done is actually used it. Mm, I'm thinking now. It would have been really nice to have actually used this as a page. I think I might even add this. Um, I don't want the yellow on there because that's too much. Um, there's not enough contrast. I just think actually that is beautiful. As I was going to use it to cover that, but I like it too much. So let's trim that down. And actually this is going to be our first page. I've got this left over from when I was trimming my pages. And actually that works really well. It's a really nice fit and I love the colour of the paper bag. So I will keep that underneath. My photos have finished printing now. I'm just going to add some tape just to be able to stick it down. I always hate this part now, actually sticking it to the paper bag because, because this is really thin. If you make any mistakes, unlike cardstock, it's really hard to actually tear up. You do end up tearing, but that's fine. That's worked out absolutely fine. Right, I've just taken a mini break. It's eight minutes past 12. I've grabbed a Pepsi Max. My youngest needed a, or asked for a um, trip to school, so I've just driven him in. And he had free periods this morning. So I'm back to my mini book now. This is stuck down, so this just gives it a bit more. It's a bit more sturdy. I'm a bit concerned because this keeps doing that. Right, now I need something for the back cover. I might actually find something else that I can pop across the back. And I think this actually will go really well and then add some extra color. So again, I'm not gonna take it all the way to the edge. And actually, do you know, I've just had an idea what I might do. Let's cut that here. We'll trim this to here. And just to show you, I'm keeping all the little strips that are left over from the trimming. Even if I don't use them on this project, they will get used in other projects. They're really handy to keep. I'm grabbing my favorite EK Success Punch. I absolutely love this punch. And I thought I would pretty up the edges a little bit. And I'm going to pop that on there. Let's fold that in half. And then it just makes it so much easier putting the crease on. So let's glue this down. I want to make sure I don't cover up that fox. The fox actually came stamped on there and I really like it. I find just by creasing it in half like that really helps. Yeah, that's... I can't seem to straighten that out. And it's actually doing my head in a bit. Um, now... I need some colour, so I do have this left over from a previous project as well. I want to find something for the front cover as well before I start putting too many um, papers on there. So I've attached the card there. I'm going to be using that frame and that photo on the front. I will go back later and add some other bits and pieces but I'm gonna concentrate now on the inner pages. I'm really unhappy with how this bag is. I can't get it to sit straight. The only thing I can actually do is cut it because I think it's just gonna continue bugging me. And now that I've cut it, I can add some tape and stick it flat again and that's so much better. Um, I didn't like the way that that had rippled up. I will continue on with the front page afterwards. But for now, I'm going to work on these pages. I always like to use a long reach stapler just to keep them in place. Um, I might add some holes and add some string through actually. I haven't decided yet, but it just holds it all in place whilst I'm working on it. I would 
really like to use this card here. Actually, I could cut it and have it on both. Yeah, I might do that actually. Let's pop that there for the time being. Um, I think the next thing is I've got a whole load of photographs and I'm going to trim these. This next bit, I want to attach this in the centre. I love this journal card. I like both sides and I don't want either covered, covered up. So I've got some washi tape, which I'm going to run along the centre there. Flip that over and I'm going to do exactly the same again. And that should hold in place. And that now flips from side to side. Let's just pop a little cut in there. There we go. actually printed off some extra photos as um, I still had space for a few more. I've got some more photos printing and in the meantime I'm actually going to add some more staples. Um, I've got blue staples and I'm going to keep the mini book together with those. For the last couple of printing I'm actually going to work on my cover. I'm going to go back to the washi tape that I used before. I've added the paper clip here and it's not sticking down quite enough. So I thought it would be fun to actually use this. Let's have it threaded underneath. Right, I've decided we're gonna have the dates so I can add the dates that we stayed at the Wilderness Lodge. I'm gonna keep this as it is. I am going to stick on the leaves. I love those colours. And we're going to have the story. I need to include the story of how we came to stay there. Moment, that is my cover. I still feel like I need something else there, but I'm really good at going completely overboard. Actually, we have got these right. bits. Chipboard here. And let's have for the record. And then let's see if I can keep it like that. I've got the pocket. I've got some bits to add in there. And then I'm just going to go each page and add some bits and pieces. tip if you've got something that you want to cover up just add an embellishment over the top I've added all the embellishments. I've also added a lot of the washi tape. I like to have something that flows throughout the book and that on this particular book is going to be the washi tape. I'm now going to go through the book, add some outlined doodling. 
and if I see any other embellishments around that kind of look right, I will add those as well. embellishments have been added and now it's time for the journaling. So for the journaling I've got a mix of handwritten and also I've printed some onto A4 paper. I'm going to cut them into strips and add them into the book. And now quarter past two and I have this finished book. It's taken me two and a half hours and that did include me running my son to school and back as well which I obviously hadn't planned on. So I'm going to give you a tour of the book now. I'm really pleased with it. This is the front cover as you've already seen. The addition is the clip which did not come in the Coco Daisy kit but it is needed and I will show you why. This is why I love making paper bag books. I've got a pocket there and in here I have actually included the paperwork that was in our room when we checked into the Wilderness Lodge. There is a map and the details. There was a letter just of the details of us staying in the club level. This was in our room, just some itinerary of the day, what was going on is going to be kept in here and the clip then just holds it together and I think that looks a really cute addition on there. So then we've got the first page just um, I've written about how we ended up coming to the Wilderness Lodge as it wasn't originally planned. Here is the um, glassine envelope and I've included this was also in our room. That was the view from my bed. I could see the contemporary resort with the monorail going in and out and I could see Space Mountain and we could see the fireworks from our room as well. And then I've written a little bit about um, the club level service. We had some pool time. A few of my favorite things that I love about staying at Wilderness Lodge. And then we've got a photo of the four of us and that was the flip card there. We spent some time, the weather wasn't so great one afternoon, so we spent some time just wandering around the resort. Breakfast in the lounge, then we took the boat over to Magic Kingdom. That's the kids on the boat. And then I've added, as you can see, little embellishments and bits and pieces. I don't mind that none of my lines are straight. I do like that doodled look. I'm sure many people would prefer it without the lines, but for me it finishes it off, but it's obviously a personal thing. Never ever worry about making mistakes. I could have just printed off my wording again and gone round there, I've gone out the edge, but that doesn't stress me out. It's not the reason. I don't do this to be perfect. As you can see, my work is by far from perfect, but it's not something that I stress over. For me, the perfection is getting my story and my photos down on paper for us to look back on, back on. And there's the back of the book. And that is my paper bag book. So I've got another one to add to my collection. I now have three from this trip. I've got a few more to make, but um, I'm really enjoying making them. And then I will, I don't know what I'm going to create. I'm going to do something though to keep them all together once they're all made. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you like to make mini books. Have you ever made a mini book? If you do, what is your favourite kind to make? And if you haven't, tell me why. What's stopping you? Um, do you find the thought quite daunting, um, that it seems quite a big project? Or is it something that you feel is too time consuming? Let me know. I would love to know your thoughts about mini books today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!